All right, cool. Uh, good morning again, Dr. Tran from Thursday Rao. So today we'll talk about how to overcome shyness. Well, first of all, uh, uh, let me tell you uh, why this is so important when you come to speaking. If you feel shy, you will likely not to present well. You'd likely not to talk well. So in today, Rao's, we'd like to make sure you understand that shyness you can overcome, you can improve. So let's go around the table first and say, uh, what well, first of what makes you feel shy? And second, how do you overcome that? Let's go ahead with Nhi, Nhi Huang, go ahead. Uh, so what makes people feel shy? Because they're afraid that they say uh, they are saying something wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I think to overcome that, so maybe we think that everything can, uh, everyone can be wrong. And if we are wrong, it doesn't mean that we are bad or something because uh, we are just, uh, I think when we say something is wrong, we still better than someone who keeps silent. Absolutely. I like this idea. So um, you are afraid of people judgment. They think that yeah. you are wrong. Okay, cool. Let's see, uh, let's see, Dutton, what do you think? Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, hello, everyone. Hello, Dr. Chen. And the the thing that I'm afraid when I speak in, when I speak medical English, so like at, at the beginner level, my I was scared of speaking medical English actually because I cannot understand what other wanted to say. So it's because of my lack of knowledge. And until now, I, although I stay for years in, like in an international environment, sometimes I still feel lack of confidence speaking English. Usually like after one or two hours speaking um, English continuously. So actually at that time, I feel tired and my brain stopped working to produce English continuously. So that's one of my problems. And to overcome the shyness, um, I think that depends on lots of factors though. But first, it depends on you. Firstly, mm -hmm. you need to prepare yourself very well by learning more medical terms and learning more vocabularies because obviously we will be more confident when we can catch the idea of the conversation or what other want to say to you. And the second is that um, I think at the beginner level, we should try to express our idea to a partner or by ourselves. Mm -hmm. I usually conduct like this when I started studying English. I think of something in Vietnamese and then I try my best to express into the English and I record it and I listen to it again. Um, remember, firstly, I was shocked because of my terrible voice. So I don't know if it's getting better right now. And second, and then I try to listen to all the native speaker to find out how they express their similar ideas to mine. And gradually, day by day, I try to repeat to what they say and I feel more confident when communicating with them. So, and when I reach to another, a higher level and I can maintain the conversation with the native speaker and that time I feel more confident in my communication, although it's not perfect yet. So, um. That's what I want to share. That, that's, a, that's very nice, uh, how would you two? Uh, okay, how about all the people, let's uh, Kim, Japan, how would you overcome your shyness? <laughs> okay, hello everybody, hello Dr. Tran, nice to see you again. Because firstly, when, before I talk about how to overcome the shyness when speaking English, general English in general and medical English, in particular, I would like to tell all of you about a story that I had already experienced one year ago when mm. I had the chance to participate in a mock lectures delivered by a English 
professor in our university for the third grade students, Japanese student. And after the lecture delivered by English, by the professor, and they are, they, we already moved to the question and answer in English for all the student and the professor. And although the professor tried to put many, many questions in this and encourage the student to stand up and answer or give some idea, but no one stand up. And after a long time, there are a very, very brave, brave young man come to the States and he tried to say some very, very general words in English, but his pronunciation, sure, he cannot, he could not be perfect. But behind him, there are lots of Japanese girl started to laugh at, at him and his, he would become very shy. And after that, he stopped speaking and say sorry in Japanese and come back. And after that, no one dared to come to the state. And after this lecture, smoke lecture, I met the pro English professor and he certified that this is a very common, common event happen in our university, not only in un our university, but in his experience, it happened all the classes in Japan that he had ever delivered English lectures. So the problem, the first problem I think is the self-confidence when we speak a foreign language, not only English. And as you know, most of the Asian students, they, will, they become very shy when they have to expose themselves to other people but they cannot perform it perfectly. Wow. And the second is the second is our ability. For example, when we have a very high level of English, we would become very self-confident confident when we spoke out to the other people. So, uh, and another problem is the cultural the, the cultural circumstance. For example, when we and to we come together with the other people, and no one be shy, and no one laugh at, no one laugh at you when you make a mistake, you will become more confident. But when everybody try to fight out your mistake and laugh at you, you become very shy, mm. and that's why. To overcome the shyness, I think firstly it is self-confidence built up by ourselves. We have to overcome our shyness by building more and more self-confidence. We just think up, let's begin. And at the beginning, we make many mistakes, but after that, keep practicing, practicing, and we have more time, more chances to to fix up the 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 mistake and after that we can improve our skill and day by day, week by week, or year by year, we can overcome this shyness. For example, me, till now I make many mistakes, but I try to overcome my shyness, even though I become shy by myself in my heart, but I have to expose myself. And I I don't care about the other people can shout at me, can laugh at me when I make mistakes because I I believe in the future I can perform better. And that's in my personal ideas how to overcome when I speak general list and in particular medical list. That's my idea. Thank you, Kim. That's, that's, very, that's a very nice, nice inspirational story that I like to uh, to hear. And you can see that uh, I know Dr. Kim now for such a long time, right? Him seven, six, seven years until now. Yes. And I can see your improvement of English is just awesome. I can tell you, it's, it's okay. really good. And that's why he's here every Thursday. I encourage you guys to think about like Dr. Kim Dang because you're talking, keep doing this, is actually the best way to overcome your shyness. Um, so let me tell you a couple of tips about shyness before I get the microphone back to you. 
So in general, study have shown that why people are shy because they care about judgments. Culturally, we people think that you inferior, you not as good as other. But the truth is, nobody care. Only you think that people care. The truth is, nobody care. If you ever come to conference, you talk properly at that moment, people will laugh at you. But after that, they don't know, they don't remember. And one thing I'll tell you, if you were the only one asked a question during the conference, even though such a stupid question, you remember than most of the people there. So you have nothing to lose, right? Just talk out loud and who, who cares if people laugh at you or people think you're not good. So number one, shine guys, do it. Just do it, keep doing it, okay? I like after today, you keep talking. And then second thing is practice make a lot of sense, practice. If you are afraid of talking before people, come to a mirror, look at yourself and talk and keep talking. The other thing is I usually share with people is one of the best way to gain confidence is make yourself look good. What I'm saying is you don't have to be a super movie star, but uh, dress nicely and professionally, that will bring a lot of confidence. Whenever you go to a meeting, if you're extremely tired, if you're extremely whatever, but try to think about it. Wear things professionally and dress nicely. And a lot of time it will make you feel confident. This is especially true for a guy. I know girl, you guys already know how to dress up, but guys, Vietnamese, I'll tell you, a lot of them don't care. And uh, when you call to go to a conference, if you dress nicely, suit you up, okay? You feel comfortable already, right? And then that, you don't have to wear suits all the time, but I think in medicine, it's a great chance for you to dress professionally. And if you dress professionally, you feel more confident. Okay, so let's go back to the audience here. And uh, uh, yes, um, so let's see. Who else will be, uh, let's say, uh, no, I'm, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, um, uh, I I am not a tenor in the beginning. So, can you uh, ask um, repeat the questions? So I can answer it uh, correctly. Well, my question for you, uh, being all, I'm just kidding. Okay, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> How did you overcome shyness as a medical student? You did really well. I saw you Wednesday night right with your colleagues and amazing. So you obviously you. your shyness and speak out loud. Uh, so, yeah, so um, I, I, I will share uh, all, uh, to all of you about my experience with the uh, Wednesday class, okay? Mm -hmm. um, at first, I, um, I think that I, I was the first one who volunteered to join in that class and actually I, I have mess, uh, uh, texting you to ask about uh, how to like arrange the class but you say that oh um, it's up to you that uh, thing that I um, it's up to me that uh, the plane and all the thing you you just do by yourself and then you will get in progress okay so uh, I, I was really nervous at that time because it's the first time I like uh, be the host of the class and um, I don't know how uh, I don't know how to uh, separate the part uh, how to manage the time uh, yeah but uh, in my opinion first yeah <laughs> uh, she uh, told me that okay you fake it you make it <laughs> um, yeah uh, just try to like um, being yourself speak out um, um, okay, so I, I, uh, I'm in the first class, I don't have a, a detailed plan, like um, in the, um, the second or the third class, I just, I and Ngan and Ji just uh, like, okay, uh, we open the Zooms and <laughs> we instru uh, instru uh, instruct to all of uh, our classmates. So it's, um, uh, I think that uh, it's, it's not well uh, time management, but um, it's, it's the first experience for us. Um, like, yeah, we don't uh, do it well at the first time, but in the next time with uh, every uh, feedback from uh, uh, 
the uh, other in instructor like Sarah or Do, and uh, um, they will like make us develop um, the skill, and uh, the, uh, and then we can run the the class smoothly. So I think, um, yeah, fake it till you make it. And and the second thing is, uh, you know, uh, you need s someone who support who support you who who will like say you, you can do it. So uh, it's it give you the strength to like uh, more uh, to be more confident. Okay. Uh, cool. So that's another you like to share with people. With you need someone to support you and say you can do it. Okay, guys. <laughs> So you hear that from Bingo, right? If you have to overcome shyness, find someone say yes, you can do it. So actually uh, today, I, I'm surprised that uh, Dr. Din Nguyen is with us. So I'd like to share his opinion, how to overcome his shyness. You know, Dr. Din Nguyen is such an amazing story. You guys should know more about this instructor from BMD. He came to Canada such a, well, not a young age. Okay? I don't call it old, but let's say not a young age. And his journal is just amazing. So uh, Dr. Lin Wei, how do you overcome your shyness when you can't first come to Canada? Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm just listening and just learning from you, okay? <laughs> anyway, you say that I came to Canada at the age of 40. So it's a very hard for me to overcome the English, especially with the, um, with the uh, listening. You know, in Vietnam, huh? in the old days, I'm not sure right now, maybe you have a very good teachers, but in the old days, huh? oh, my English teacher pronounced incorrectly, everything. So you couldn't, could, you couldn't catch any meanings. Huh? At the, the same time when I came, I can read newspaper very well, no problem with me at all. But when you listen it, when you're speaking, people just, <laughs> you know, don't, didn't understand you, what you say. Okay, so that's why we have to back to square one anyway. And uh, like everybody, yeah, I, I don't want to waste uh, my time here because I, I would like uh, of you to, sh to, to tell us your story. But anyway, the most important, two most impo important things that I say that um, the people from Vietnam. Number one, in Vietnam, we, teach too much about grammar. And to me, it's a useless. <laughs> Sorry for that. Huh? You can do the grammar when you're writing, but when you communication, when listening, when you're speaking, you don't have time to, 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 to think about a grammar. Huh? So that's why it's a very quick point in Vietnam. Huh? We so concentrate on reading and writing, but not speaking and listening. And number two, uh, you have to overcome the, uh, your afraid, like a shyness, like Dr. Wynn say, okay. The, the, because you think that you are doctors, yeah? or, so you, you can't say it's wrong, yeah? but it's not, okay. You just say, and then people will fix for you. I always ask my colleague in my um, workplace, just tell me what am wrong so I can fix it. That's, that's the way we can improve it, otherwise, we just step in square one and never approve the English. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Dan. Now that it's your time. Raise your hand. Oh, right. let me welcome uh, Tu Nguyen from uh, Korea. I know this guy for a while. Hey, Tu. No, Hello, Tu. I I'm not from Korea. It's so Vietnam. <laughs> Are you from Vietnam? Oh, my bad. I, I thought you were from Korea. <laughs> right? Did you do your training in Korea, too? No, I never been in Korea, but I I used to travel to Singapore along. Oh, okay. To celebrate New Year's. All right. So, how did you overcome shyness? Uh, how did I overcome shyness? I don't know because you know it's maybe because the cultures of Vietnam, people always look at you and. Uh, think of, uh, when you make some mistake and they will tell you tell the other people that you are uh, something like that so that's make uh, Vietnamese people more shy when they want to do something uh, but in uh, just for myself I don't care about other opinions I just want to try and in 
I told I told you I traveled to Singapore along, and in when I finished my fifth year in university, I traveled to Hanoi along, and people always told me that, oh, Hanoi is not a good place for you to travel. I don't care about that opinions. I just want to discover by myself. And when I came to Hanoi, there are so many interesting things happened to me, and I met so many so many nice people. I don't care about the people. If you don't want to make the first move, you you will never know. You have to you give opinion about your real experience. So I think just do what you want and don't care don't care about either either opinion. And if you are a doctor, I I think if you want to be get more confident, I think the first thing that you have to have the knowledge. You have to read book every day. You have to update every day. If you don't do that, and the other doctor told you that you are wrong, but 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 they just told you wrong, but you don't know why, and you have to find by yourself. You have to open the book. You have to find why I'm wrong, or if they're wrong and I'm right, who can who who know? So you have I think the best. The best way for a doctor in Vietnam to get more confident is that you you have to learn English, uh, learn English better, so you can find the thing by yourself, and that's make you the better doctor. Thank and, you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Go ahead, Thảo. Your uh, question, right? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if it's actually the shiniest stuff I'm asking about, but like. Sometimes I don't know how to like start a conversation with people, like you know how to break the ice, and like it's really hard for me. Like for example, I go to a conference, uh, I go to a new place, then uh, like how can I make connections with people around, uh, with the speaker, something like yeah, something like that. And I just want to say about one thing is like um, you know, like when I go to practice in Canada and. Um, I have some other students, medical students with me. And like, when they don't know about something, they have the way to say it. And like, people say, okay, um, like, they, they have a way to mask it, like mask that not knowing about something. But like, I'm really bad at that. Like, I I just plain, plainly say that, oh, so, I'm sorry, I don't know. And like, people look at me like a Like I'm really stupid. <laughs> I really hate that. So like, yeah, like that. Two of my questions, like first is how can I like start a conversation and break the ice with people around, especially in conference, and the second like how can I, like, improve my uh, my language to to like say smoothly and like, um, like like other students, yeah. Sure. Sure. Well, I'll tell you from my experience with, with teaching and all the people when I see in conferences, this is very common in Asia when you see people come from China or Taiwan, Vietnam. Yeah. Yes, you don't know how to start conversation and and you just keep thinking and you look around and the moment you find your question, well, the person you like to ask already gone or exactly right. Yeah. So whether I tell my student or I show myself, it's, well, first of all, you just say something like common. You say, "What a great presentation!" You just you you can always stay with that because nobody will decline that. Everyone <laughs> like remember human beings, right? Everyone love people, praise you. People love you. People telling good thing about you. In fact, a lot of time I say, "Oh, awesome! That's a really good presentation." But I'm wonder, and then this is your question. So you can always say, "That's a really good question." But I'm wonder what happened in this. Well, a lot of time, if we, I, a doctor, we try to avoid say, "I don't know." But actually, it's very common. I think it's complete okay. Say, but I, I don't know. I don't know how did you come with this conclusion? How did you find it? It must be. It's quite interesting. How did you find out? So that's why I would. So it's not with basic. You don't have to go like. Many people think that you have to use a lot of like really big words mm -hmm. in communications. Simple, simple will make you such a long way. And I just say, oh, that's great conversation, great presentations. 
but I don't know how did you come with this idea, or I'm not sure if this statistically significant in clinical practice. Would you help me? Would you um, enlighten me? A lot of time that I I ask people, this is a way that people enjoy. Would you? And like me, so it, it's just like you. The, you they feel, oh my god, I, I'm really a good speaker. And then, in, fact, in fact, I told one of you guys. I don't know, Bingo, you remember from last week, the way that you choose a word will make your sentence such as very powerful. Yeah. And then when you stop, you remember when I talk to you guys. It is my intention to stop for several seconds. Mm-hmm. In fact, when I speak at the conference or at my hospital rounds, I wait for a couple of seconds because silence makes people attention, right? You, when you ask people a question like that and you, you keep for a couple of seconds and then the author just, okay. And then you keep asking more. So that's how you gain the attention and that's how you overcome shyness. Control the situation. Control your question, and, and that would help you overcome the questions. But thank you for such a great question. I hope that give you some tip. So next time when you guys go to a conference, make sure that just pay attention to one or two slides. And say, wow, yeah, and you can go from there. And many authors, remember, many authors, they do not present 100% of their work. If you ask at the right moment, oh my gosh, they will tell you everything from the beginning. How did I come with the study? what is the difficult, what the challenging things. And I say, Bingo, remember last time, don't say difficult. I found it challenging. Remember that, right? And then absolutely, eventually, <coughs> don't what you like to say <coughs> that until you get to it. All right, other question, other race? Um, anyone else? Come on guys. We talk about shyness today, so all of you are really shy. Okay, um, before I, as I, I said, usually we, we start with about 8 15 today, we about 15 minutes place. Now, one more thing about shyness. This is just from my personal opinion. Um, over time, what I found is um, a lot of people, when they approach patients, and if you not confident about yourself, as when they say about uh, dressing, grooming, and one thing is a voice. If you pay attention to any speaker, they can confident by speak loud. I like you to practice this at home, even with me, try to speak loud and clear and slow. If you speak loud, clear and slow, you will overcome your shyness very soon. Make sense? So a lot of my students, they do this uh, practice and, and they found really useful. Okay, go ahead, Kim. Sorry, because I keep silent because I want to share the moment with the other people, but I recognize there's, there, there are no people who want to say something. So I come back. Actually, I had one more experiment to share with you and how to overcome the shyness when we come up fr- in front of the very big crowd to give the lectures or to deliver some things. Now, firstly, when you try to confident, keep your breath and calm down. And when you come to the stage, just look forward to the end of the auditorium and don't look to any face. Try to speak out in the empty room and don't care about the other people reaction. So just go slowly. And I have to practice them many times and I try to watch the other or the, the other presenter, presenters deliver speech. For example, in the TED talk or in, in the other uh, international program. So I keep practicing and I had more chance to do this because in the past I were lecturers in the university and sometimes I had to come to the large auditorium to give the lecture to the other student. And you know, at the first time when I came there, I become very shy, even though I delivered 
the lectures in Vietnamese. I have to try and repair very carefully. But when I come to the state, I forgot everything. <laughs> but day, day by day, but day by day, I try to don't didn't look to the other people, and I just try my work and don't care about the reaction of the others. So, and after that, when I get in more uh, confidence and I look at other face, and this is the second step, when I have the confidence, I look at the auditory, the audience faces and I try to react with them. And I find it's a very interesting. It's just like a, a normal conversation with the, adult, the other people. It's just a conversation, a normal conversation. Try to exchange the idea, try to talk with them and try to recognize the interesting movement in their face and you find them, it's very interesting. And you forgot the, the shyness. You forgot the, the something that make you e irritable when you come to the stage. So, and you find it is a very, very, interesting, amazing moment when you come in front of the very big ground of people and everyone can look at you. So that's the, my experience when I practice how to overcome the sinus before the big ground of people. Awesome. That, that's really good and common thing that you guys can learn from Dr. Kim. Now, uh, any other comments? Uh, let, let, let me get back to you. One more thing about Dr. Din Wing mentioned about grammars. It actually completely makes sense that you forget about grammar when you speak. It will come later. Don't worry about that. If you're thinking about, oh, should I use present, pass, or whatever term, you already lost your mind. You lost the moment. Go ahead and speak out whatever in your mind, it will come later. Keep talking and your grammar, everything will come later. Don't worry. And a lot of times we think, oh my God, people just me by my grandma sucks, who cares? If you listen to um, many great speakers, if you really tap, you see that they have a lot of grammars. Well, you should remember that speaking and writing is quite different. So forget about that. Just go and speak out loud your mind. It will come later. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that you should speak wrong grammar. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you will get it later on. For example, a lot of time I tell my students, you try to correct basic thing first. The two more common things I would like to tell you for Vietnamese people is number one, she or he don't. This is very hard. This is, this is not good. Whenever you mention about he or she or the patient, just say the patient does not try to use common grammar. And all the things that Vietnamese students usually have, they, I mentioned earlier that uh, Dingo, you probably remember this. You like to start a conversation with so and then. Many of you guys come to this Thursday round, realize that um, over time, you guys won't start a conversation with so, okay? All right, I think our time is about to, uh, I have about five minutes, but uh, let's see. Our time, did you just raise your hand? Tao, go ahead. Yes. Um, uh, my other question is like, um, <laughs> my shyness, a uh, little to one thing is that, um, for example, um, for example, like one teacher in the center and then a group of students waiting for asking questions like that. And like, I always like when, what you suggest is like, I just talk slow and like loud and clear, but that I, I always in my mind, I feel like I'm really afraid that if I speak too slow or if I stop, then people are gonna jump into my speech. <laughs> like, like people wow. will not interested in what I'm asking about and like he gonna switch the attention to the other students. Well, yeah. that's actually not true. In my group discussion, the one that talk really fast, I usually ask them to repeat the question. <laughs> if you talk fast and then you repeat the question again, 
your time is double. You're not actually saving time. And then the idea is not clearly present. I encourage you guys. In fact, if you think about it, you listen to President Obama speaking. His speech is not that fast. It's quite common and then he stopped. If you think about how we as a brand process information, a good question, you really listen to that carefully before you can get an answer. Nice, well, nice. a student, we know it's cool. Hey, what's up with this? You know, I don't understand this question, blah, blah, blah. Teacher, I don't think you do this, whatever. But for me, start slow and ask me a question. Because if even American native speaker, if they speak too fast, I don't think we can understand what he or she tried to say. Now, some of us uh, have experience with Indian doctor. And if they speak too fast, I will tell you, they sing a song. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, and I politely wait until they sing a song and say, I'm not quite sure what you try to say. And then, you know what? <laughs> then the student have to go back again. And I, I, that's my intention to wait until the student finished, I don't interact. I'll tell you, and he or she did learn something next time when we discuss, he speaks very slow. Because I, I did wait and I asked him again. I'm not quite sure. And, and he's realized that. And he's, I see. Okay. okay, I would like to tell uh, something here. It's yes. not um, very related to the topic today, but I would like to make emphasis here. Uh, because beside you have to overcome your shyness, don't pretend that you understand. It's very important in, in medicine. Eh? Because a lot of people say, oh, behave like, that. oh, they understand, they understand everything. But really, they don't. And that's create a lot of problems, especially in the OR or in emergency or something. Eh? So now, if you don't understand, just say that you don't understand. Don't say that, yes, 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 all the time. Yeah? And then we, when we ask, they don't know anything. Huh? So this is very, very important. Uh, you have to think about that too. Thank you, Dr. Din, for such an insight because we've been teaching medical English for a while. And this is very common. When I ask my student, and they said yes, and then they knock their head like, oh my gosh, they get every single point. But when we ask them back, you know, they're not quite sure. Okay, go ahead, Jin. Yeah, hello everyone. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, actually, after hearing the sharing from you guys, I have one comment and one question actually to Dr. Dinh Nguyen. And so first, actually, at first, I want to share some of the experience to have more chance to speak medical English when you were a medical student. And as you know, this day, there are lots of international doctors who come to the University of Medicine and Pharmacy in Ho Chi Minh City to give lecture, or they come to Vietnam to attend the conference. So um, in my case, I used to volunteer to take care of the professor, international professor. And after their conference, usually they would stay in Ho Chi Minh City for one or two days to visit around Ho Chi Minh City. And that's when I asked to visit around with them and uh, showing, show them around the Ho Chi Minh City. And at that time I can have more chance to practice my English and I can also listen to them to hear what they express the similar ideas in English. So I think it may be a an easy to find environment for the medical students. And I hope it will be helpful for you guys. And another question that I would like to ask the doc the doctors here, especially Dr. Din Nguyen about showing that you don't understand um, when you hear something. So, but usually when they speak a very long sentence or a very long idea, we catch the key words. But how can we know that 
the keywords are correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a very basic uh, technique uh, in, uh, medic in medicine too, huh? because uh, you know communication sometimes get lost during the uh, the process. So there's so many techniques that you 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 can apply. Number one, number one, make sure honestly. If you don't understand, you just be behave and you say that you don't understand. <laughs> number two, you just ask and you just ask and when the people who repeat you again and you still not understand. So you have to find some way to ask, or could you rephrase it? Or you could you use a different word or I couldn't get it. So, okay, so that people will do that. And you remember when we teach the English, uh, medical English, a lot of students just use the terms in textbook to talk to the patient. It's no way that the layman, the, the normal people can understand you. So you have to convert it from the medical terms, the academic terms to very plain uh, English. So that's, that's a trick and that's the art. Okay, so it's, it's a communication is two ways. How you make people understand you is one thing and how you, you don't understand and how you communicate it, okay? I'm not sure that uh, my answer uh, is clear or you have to, something to ask more. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Dinai. I think that um, give the, uh, the student in general and, and Dr. Putin some understanding about how to, this is quite common when we see a lot of long conversation, we, we're not sure, we don't understand. Make sure you guys that ask a question again, and if you still don't understand it, then you go from there. Okay, guys, we're going to end our conversation today, and I hope to see you next week. Okay? Thank you.